Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon extremely popular request, finally, we're gonna react to Christian bursted in tears after Yusuf Estes answered his questions. So this video truly, since I started doing Islamic reaction videos, has been recommended from the get-go. In the very first couple of days, I started doing reaction videos and since then has been buried in my playlist. So today, finally, we're gonna react to Yusuf Estes. With no further ado, let's have a look. And your occupation as well, please? I'm a business person. Okay, I was invited to this peace convention by a friend. And I came here because it was called a peace convention. But so I, I found this catalog, I took a booklet that said something about Yusuf. It was written that raised as a strong Christian, educated in Texas, UOT, he became very successful owning music stores television shows and was a music minister and preacher of the Bible. So I want to ask you, sir, as a preacher of the Bible, what was the what was the reason or the point or the truth that you found in Islam that led to your conversion as a strong Christian and preacher of the Bible? That's a beautiful question. Fair enough. Because there's lights in my eyes, I don't know exactly where you are. Can you hold up your hand? Where I'm here, sir. There you are. I'm sorry. Now I see you. Your name is Gabriel? Yes, sir. In Arabic, it's Jibril. That's the angel I was talking about. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we're very happy to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure for you to ask such a question in such a nice way. I'm privileged uh, to ask you that question. I wish I was there. I could give you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because when I was a Christian, see, I wasn't nice like you. You're nice. I was tough, you know. Uh, because I thought I had to save the world, I'm going to go out and preach a message. And, you know, I'm still a little wacko. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, not <laughs> near as bad as I was. What I found... And this is important to know. What I found was in my Bible first. What I found was in my Bible first. Because I used to travel with a lot of the so-called preachers of Christianity. So-called is good. And some of the ones that I traveled with, they don't represent real Christianity, by the way, but I traveled with them and I learned that Very I couldn't well. trust them. Nice. I like that he mentioned this here because if you really look into Christianity you will see what true canonical Christianity is, what has happened before the schism of Christianity, what has happened before all of those new branches have popped up. What you will find is Orthodox Christianity, the most authentic form of Christianity and I would even make the claim the only canonical version of Christianity there is. Especially when they would pick up the Bible and say the Bible says, the Bible says and afterwards I would say, it didn't say that. They say, who cares as long as the people think so. Okay. And so it bothered me so much that I started trying to really read and understand many different translations of the Bible. But they didn't match. So I said, obviously, you know, translation is not the real thing. I need to learn Kone Greek. Right. I knew that the Latin, I had already studied Latin and I knew that the... Which was already a deal breaker for me personally because when I went to Mount Athos, which is a secluded island within Greece, an autonomous state similar to the Vatican where monks and priests have practiced Christian orthodoxy for over a thousand years, I went over there and those people predominantly speak Greek and they said as well that if I really want to understand the Bible, I need to learn Greek. But that made me question 
mention the whole thing because I believe the original manuscripts must have been in Hebrew or Aramaic. So why would I have to learn Greek? Later I found out that we only have Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. This is how my faith started crumbling. Vulgate was only a translation of Kone Greek anyway. So when I went to the Kone Greek, it was hard. That was really hard because mm. those characters, they're, they're confusing, you know. I don't know if you know Greek, but it's weird. Greek to me, anyway. Then I come to know that, oh, by the way, actually Jesus' language was a form of Hebrew called Aramaic. Exactly. A form of Semitic language called Aramaic. And I had no clue what that was. Mm. So I tried to learn the Hebrew. Now, all along the way, I'm taking, okay, interlinear Bible. I don't know if you know what that is. That's when you have... Yeah, but if you learn Hebrew, then you might understand the Old Testament, but you still won't understand the New Testament because, as I said, it is written in Greek. And that is the issue here, that we have an Old Testament in Hebrew, a New Testament in Greek, and you have the language of Jesus, which is Aramaic. You have the word in English, and under it will have the word in Kone Greek, and you can look it up. Now, people like Ahmed Didat, Rahim Allah, and Dr. Zachar Naik, they have these giant computer brains. <laughs> yeah, okay? sure. I don't have that. <laughs> giant computer brains. They can process all this stuff in uh. their head. <laughs> and I traveled with Zachar many times, and I have to tell you, he can really do that any time. It's crazy. But this is not my subject. When I was studying it, I came to realize that there was a book called Strong's Concordance of the Bible. My father had a copy, so I would sit there. It's big. It's a very big book. And I would go through and look for these words. And then it will tell you in Kone Greek what's the root, what it comes from, and what it's related to. Okay. And where it's in the Bible. And then all of a sudden, I started discovering something really big. There's a whole lot of interpolation because if you look over here, the same exact word means one thing, but over here it means something else. Mm -hmm. And then statements that people say about the Bible are not true. If I quote to you from what we have in the Quran, I can quote it to you in the Arabic language. But how many people do you know that can quote the Bible in the original Aramaic of the New Testament or ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament? Not very many people, right? Of course not. But I want you to look while well, you're standing right there, Gabriel. Look around this room right here. Now, I, I don't know most of these people. Some of them know me from TV or something like that, but they don't really know me. But if I open this book on any page and I start quoting out of this thing, Believe it or not, they will know if I'm making mistakes. There'll be somebody in this room that can tell you, no, that's a mistake. You said it wrong. But I'm just going to go to the first page. There we go. This is the first page. Hold it so the cameras can get a shot. Hi, guys. All right. What's the first letter? First letter in the first page. Anybody know? Tell us. Ba. Everybody knows it's Ba. So what's the word? Bismillah. This is Arabic. And keep in, keep in mind, this is an English program we're doing. I'm speaking some form of English right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next words. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Amen. You don't have to say Amen except in Islam, but you know. Anyway. Now you could say, Gabriel, oh well, I mean, you know, that could be a rehearsal thing that people do every day. And guess sure. what? You'd be right. 
Right. Especially when it comes down to Al Fatiha, because it is very similar to the Lord's Prayer, and most Christians do know the Lord's Prayer by heart as well. But of course, we know that within the Quranic context, it is different and goes beyond that because there are plenty of people that memorize the whole Quran. We do say that. We say it every day, five times a day we pray, but there are a total of 17 times we say it. So you could say, ah, they just know that. But by the way, how about if I mispronounce something? Would they catch it? Whoops. Ah. Huh? Ooh, yeah, alayhim. Huh? Actually, it's both because there is another pronunciation, but the common one. Now, I want to go to the other side though. I'm going to go to the back. I'll go to the back. That was the front, this is the back. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul huwa Allah. Allah. Lam. Wa lam. Wa lam. That's in the back. Whoops. How about the middle? It's not actually dead middle, okay, but it's close to the middle. In Adina? How about that? That's chapter 3, verse 19, by the way. Kuntin Chayra Umatin? That's chapter 3, verse 110. Now, what I'm showing you is only Islam can do this. this in Arabic. That's true. Every Muslim on the earth knows this book in the Arabic language. That's 1.6 billion know that it's in Arabic. And we have some of it memorized, and all of us know it's only in Arabic. Yes. No, wait. This is where it gets good. How many in this room, you know somebody who memorized the whole entire Quran cover to cover? Raise your hand. In Arabic. You, you met somebody, you know somebody, somebody in your family. Raise your hand. I did this in a university in the United States. I said, now, for the Christians, raise your hand if you ever met anybody in your life who memorized the whole Bible in Hebrew and Kone Greek and they just went, what? Is that the language? True. My point is not to put down the Bible. My point is to put down the people who lie about it. Because the more I studied the Hebrew and the Kone Greek, the more I began to realize that what I was learning from the Quran in English, I was reading English, Yusuf Ali, you remember? It was the same thing. Especially the one I read to you just now and they helped me with. Lam yalid. Well, lam yalid. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a translation of, of scripture. God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. Is the Bible says the that too. Is it in the Quran? Yes. But I didn't quote it from the Quran. Exactly. I quoted it from the Bible. Yes. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Yep. God is not a man that he should sin, and God is not the son of man that he'll repent. Yep. And when I read that, I said, now wait a minute. If it says here... That's why I don't understand how the Protestant movement came about and they still believe in the Trinity and all the rest. So the Protestants say they live by sola scriptura, which means they only live by the Bible. No church fathers, no real priesthood, no pope or anything on those lines. They don't adhere to the Nicene Council. They don't adhere to any particular creed for that matter. So ultimately, I'm really wondering how would you then come to the conclusion of the Trinity? If you really go by sola scriptura, if you really look into the Bible, I don't understand how anybody can come to the conclusion that God is a man. It says it right there. If God is not a son of man, then 
how is it in the New Testament it's saying Jesus is son of man how could he be a God I took it to one of my preacher friends and I said hey look at this what do you say about this you know what he said he said that's a big s son of man the other one's a little s son of man <laughs> now I think I think you already know as most of the audience knows there's no such thing as upper and lower case letters in Aramaic Hebrew or Arabic it means they lied again and then another subject another subject saying Islam spread by the sword Islam spread by the sword I heard so many preachers telling me get away from these Muslims Islam spread by the sword sure that is an argument 604 pages 114 chapters 6666 verses depending on how you count them up guess what and many words in Arabic for sword safe Muhammad Hussam the, I think 16 words for sword guess how many times I found the, any of those words in the Arabic zero not once in the Bible just the word sword over 200 times sure even Oops. the second coming of Jesus wait you will come with the sword to divide me, I'm just telling you so when I take my Bible to the preacher and I said excuse me it says here that Jesus said exactly I did not come with peace I came with a sword and it's time to sell your coat and buy a sword what did that mean you know what he said listen to this you'll never believe how people can lie he said don't you know this was done in Italy where they transcribed this stuff the Latin you know it was in Italy Rome is in Italy don't you know that I said yeah he said and they would work by candlelight at night and it was hard to see yeah and while they were trying to translate you know put this down in the Latin language you know what happened they were eating spaghetti the Italians they like spaghetti and spaghetti fell down and it was made a s it was word it wasn't sword it was word he said I came with the word no way that's a real story man that's the craziest thing I've ever heard now you know what's wrong with that are you kidding me the word for word in Kone Greek is logos exactly right the now how logos. did they turn logos into sword by dropping spaghetti on it and here excuse me but what does it mean sell your coat and buy a word what is it a game show on TV I'd like to buy that word right there for a hundred dollars please what is this and the more I talked to them the more I could see lie after lie after lie and finally I said you know what I don't need to be in a religion full of liars but it didn't I would really like to know which branch of Christianity this was since me about Islam yet where I got convinced about Islam is over a separate subject and then the Quran and the Bible backed it up right there buddy in the heart because nobody can play with your heart that's yours you own it it's yours you can do whatever you want with it it is yours right yes that's the one thing nobody can imprison they can lock me in a prison put me in a box throw me in the ocean but they can't control this that's mine that's yours you own it so if you get inside of that heart like I did and clean it out and throw all the trash and the garbage out of there throw the lies out of there the misconceptions the prejudice and just give it all up and say you know what I belong to God I just belong to God God guide me and that's what I did and when I did that I had this strange impression I need to put my head on the ground and so I did that the man is entertaining and with my head on the ground I said these words Gabriel oh God if you're there guide me and when I got up I realized something I'm the one with the problem yes bro the world's not the problem I was the problem exactly right and from that day to this day 19 years 
I'm saying the same thing every day, 17 times a day. Edina Sarata Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Edina Sarata Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. And I'm going to tell you something. Very powerful conclusion and absolutely true. We cannot change the world. We can only change ourselves. You heard this many times before. I'm certain. However, if you have that deep realization within yourself, it changes everything. You all of a sudden understand what it really means to be self-accountable and you will stop wasting so much time. It's absolutely beautiful because when you try to fix the world, it will overwhelm you. It's absolutely impossible for you to fix the world, but you can control yourself. That's what you can do. You can put good food into your body. You can pray. You can work on your attitude. You can learn new languages. You can praise God more effectively than you did yesterday. You can do all of those changes within yourself. And we are all construction sites. There's so much to do within ourselves. And once we stop looking outward and we start looking inward, this is when the true transformation happens. I'm Very not psychic. We don't now. believe in psychic and magic and all that stuff. We don't. But I'm going to tell you something. Mm, it's not that you don't believe in it. It is real, but you don't practice it. And, and, and now you, are, you, brothers and sisters, are going to see something strange. Because Gabriel and I don't, never met. We're not setting this up. What I, he doesn't even know what I'm going to say. But Gabriel, you've been praying in your heart, asking God to guide you, or you wouldn't be standing there right now. Is that true or false? That is true. There you go. There's your verification. He said that's true. And I know it because I've been through this again and again and again. Thousands of people I watch come to Islam again and again, just like Gabriel. They're looking for truth. They're not looking for Islam. They're not looking for the Quran. They're just looking for truth, real truth. Exactly. And because there's only one God and only one way to get to God, it has to be on his terms. And there's only one way. And we said it in Adina, in the Lahi, Islam. The only thing Allah wants from you is this simple thing, your heart. That's what he wants. Give him your heart and everything else will be fine. And how you do that? I'm going to give you five words in the English language. They have to be all at the same time. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. Do you want those things in your life? Yes, sir. I do too. Everybody in this room wants those things. All at the same time though. Surrender, submission, obedience to his commandments you know the ten commandments we got the same thing it's the same thing it's not a new religion and then sincerity to be sincere no lies no showing off no riyadh for Allah only and finally to be in peace with whatever he gives you say okay thank you even if you like it thank you if you don't like it thank you anyway because it's from him be in peace with it this word in Arabic is one. It takes five words in English. You know what the word is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam. Really? That's the word. All right, Yusuf, you did it. I have goosebumps all over my body. This must be the best presentation on Islam that I've ever seen. Not necessarily theologically so deep, but really coming from the heart. A straight shooter, this man, and absolutely resonating with people that were seeking for truth. Because this is what I've been doing here on this channel since I started this channel. And even before that, I've been seeking for truth. Questioning my parents, questioning my surrounding, never stop asking always wanted to understand the truth dietary I wanted to understand the truth when I was 12 years old I started my first diet from 12 years old to 35 years old I did every single diet on this planet to understand how the human body functions be it keto primal diet paleo diet carnivore diet be it veganism raw veganism fruitarianism and what not spiritually speaking 
thing. I explored all of it. I went to the Buddhist temples in Thailand, in Indonesia. I went to the Amazon jungle and drank the indigenous brew with the shamans. And then finally, I returned back to the Abrahamic faith of Orthodox Christianity. From there, I didn't stop either. As I said, I went to Mount Athos, to the monasteries, to speak with the monks firsthand. I really wanted to understand truth. And now we are finally here, sitting here, reacting to Islamic videos, having read the Quran. This is what I'm trying to understand. And I do understand one thing. I do understand that the only truth truth is God. This is beautiful and sad at the same time. It's tough to watch for me, I have to say. You can clearly see the sincerity in this man's eyes. This man really found what he was looking for, you can tell. First thing, I just ask him privately, and I'm just going to ask again, just confirm that you believe that God is really only one God. I do believe there is okay. only one God. So now say after me, I swear. I swear. There is no God to worship except Allah. There is no God to worship except Allah. And I swear. And I swear. That Muhammad is his prophet. That Muhammad is his prophet. Allah. Now this next part is Arabic. It means the same thing, but when you say it, you're going to be saying the language that God sent it down in. The same language, similar to Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad. You ready? I'll help you. Okay. Ash Hadu. Ash Hadu. An La. Hala. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. Ashadu. Ashadu Ana Muhammad Ani Muhammad Rasulullah Bismillah Rasulullah Rasulullah Perfect Allah Alhamdulillah How did I do that? 
Now, we have some, I have some books that I want to give you, and you, you have to, uh, you take care of them, you come to the program with me after this, sure. bring them back there, take care of them, this is my son, this is my guest. This is good. MashaAllah, this is exactly what Islam is. Once you present the truth, the truth is accepted. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Very, very emotional watch. Extremely powerful, extremely draining for me personally as well to watch this. You could clearly see a man breaking down internally because he finally found what he was looking for. It's absolutely beautiful. I said this before, when a woman is crying, there is nothing much to it. Women are emotional and they can cry about many things. Yes, misogynistic Bobby here. But when a man is truly crying, you can see that there is really something inside of him that needs to get out. Men don't just cry out of nowhere. And you could clearly see that this man came with sincerity. Moreover, Yusuf Estes here did a phenomenal job at conveying the message and presenting the message of Islam to that audience and more importantly to that person right then and there. He is very intelligent. He might not have a super brain like Dr. Zucker Nike to memorize things, but he has social intelligence and he truly understood what was going on in this man and therefore he could appeal to him directly. He could tailor fit his approach directly to the man. Socially, this man is extremely intelligent and therefore he was able to bring this man into the fold of Islam. Anyways, guys, the video is long enough as it is, so I'm going to cut it off here and moreover, this is something that I want to process on my own time. This video truly made me think and this is not something that I can share on a reaction video. This is something that I have to learn about in seclusion. Please respect that. All right, guys, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel, please consider becoming a patron. Check out the links in the description box for that. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.